thank you, Chair. Um, I also want to um, appreciate the presentation. Um, I think, Chair, it's important that when we are dealing with this disaster, we have a two-prone approach. Um, the first would be dealing with the immediate problems and the immediate um, solutions. But we know um, this disaster, particularly in KZN in some parts of the Eastern Cape, that we always have rains from, you know, this is not the first time we've had floods of this nature. So it's very important that the nature of the solutions also do take into account, um, you know, proactive measures so that we don't have a similar situation happening 10 years from now. So my first question would be um, regarding um, you know, the geological rezoning of um, the, 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 the country so that all floodplains are declared unfit for residential and business um, purposes. This would be able to ensure that not only in the areas affected, Chair, but all over the country, so that we don't find ourselves in a situation whereby another disaster happens, for example, um, in another area, and you find that the people that are in those areas uh, are, in, are living in those floodplains, um, you know, if there was a geological rezoning, they would be spared from such a disaster. Um, does the, 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 the minister not think it, was, it is prudent to move each and every person um, or all people that are currently living on floodplains, um, you know, for, for, for their safety? The second question is regarding the um, involvement of the Council of Geoscience um, in the third objective as is highlighted in the presentation, which is the rebuilding and the reconstruction. How involved are they? Because in some of the issues that were raised, particularly on the topography and the geological technic um, technicalities, um, the G Council of Geosciences could add a lot of value um, um, can add a lot of value. Then the last question, Chair, would be what is currently done um, to actually protect people who would want to run away from one unsafe area and think that another area is safe, but only to find that also that area is not um, safe as well. We know that this um, um, disaster struck um, beginning um, in, in April. But as of this um, last weekend, we've seen another um, high levels of floods. So it could happen that a person might have run away from one area thinking that area is un unsafe, later on to realize that they're also running to another unsafe area. What is done um, to actually prevent people from um, taking such decisions or protect it? Because people might not have the technical expertise um, to know which areas are safe or which other areas are not safe. And lastly, as this is an ongoing disaster, as a means of being proactive, what is done to engage churches? We know that churches have buildings that um, in some areas are currently used. Um, so instead of waiting for another disaster to strike and then where we, the, the, the ministry um, um, approaches churches, is there no way of being proactive and just talking to the churches currently um, in the Tequini area um, where this disaster is mostly, um, you know, right in, um, to make sure that should it happen that people lose their houses and they need to be immediately evacuated, there's quite a number of organizations that are on standby to receive those people. Thank you, Chen. Thank you, Honorable Zumula. We will come to the second round. Let's allow the Honorable Minister and uh, the team to respond to the. 